Hey folks, welcome to this update to the Redshift Masterclass course, which covers all the new features added from Redshift 2025.2.1 to Redshift 2025.4.2. The biggest new feature is Open PBR Material. It is the new Uber shader in Redshift designed to replace the standard material eventually. It is still in development and some of its parameters might change or they might add new features. Open PBR material is quite similar to the standard material in how it functions, its parameters and the layout, but it does have some differences. Instead of going through every single parameter of the Open PBR material, I'll just show you where and how it might be different compared to the standard material. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, Redshift Masterclass, your complete guide to Redshift for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 19 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Now make sure to open up the 0401 a standard surface base c4d file from your project files we might use some other cinema 4d files as we go through this lesson now create a new open pbr material from the material manager assign it to the shader ball and open up its node editor now let me add a standard material as well in case we needed to compare the two At a first glance, you notice how similar Open PBR material looks when compared to the standard material. We have the base layer with almost identical parameters. The reflection section is named specular in the Open PBR material. Then we have transmission, subsurface, coat, thin film, and emission layers like the standard material. And the sheen component is named fuzz in the Open PBR material, but the fuzz layer is a bit different in how it functions and where it is layered compared to the sheen layer of the standard material. We'll discuss that later on. Now, what is Open PBR material and what's the reason for it being here? Even though it's quite similar to the standard material, so what's the reason? Open PBR material is an advanced physically based shader designed to deliver realistic materials. It's built around the Open PBR surface shading model, a specification created as an open standard with the goal of unifying material representation across different software and workflows. Open PBR material isn't just a shader in isolation. It's part of the broader Open PBR initiative under the Academy Software Foundation and Material X umbrella. Open PBR material aims at fostering industry-wide convergence by providing a robust open standard for material representation. By doing so, it helps streamline asset exchange and ensures consistency in appearance across different rendering engines and production environments. So basically the idea is that we would have the same open PBR material across all the DCCs and render engines and that way we can simply replicate the exact same look and material from one render engine to the other. Let's start an IPR session in the render view. If we take a look at the base layer, you notice it's identical to the standard material. The only difference is that in the standard material, you can define the BRDF diffuse model and choose between Oren layer, Lambertian, and EON or energy conserving Oren layer, which is the more advanced and newer model. We will learn more about that in a future video in this update. While the open PBR material uses EON BRDF model by default, and we cannot choose the other models. Another difference here is how open Open PBR handles metalness. Let me copy the base color from the open PBR material to the standard material and use the standard material as the surface output for now. If I increase the metalness to one and start adjusting the reflection weight, you notice it doesn't affect the reflection intensity of the metal. But if I connect the open PBR material again to the surface output and increase the metalness to one, Now the specular weight actually controls the reflection intensity of the metal, while the metalness parameter controls whether the surface is metal or not. For now, let's set it to one. If we compare the reflection component of the standard material and the specular component of the open PBR material, 
you notice there is no anisotropy rotation parameter in the OpenPPR material. Instead, we have a new input called anisotropy tangent. So if I increase the anisotropy amount to maybe 0.85, we get something, but it doesn't look quite right. In order to be able to see the correct result and rotate the stretched specular highlights, I need to connect a new node called surface tangent to this anisotropy tangent input. So let's press C and add a surface tangent node. Connect it to the tangent input of the open PBR material. Immediately we get a more accurate result and now I can use the rotation amount to rotate the anisotropy. And the sole reason for the surface tangent existence is to be connected to the anisotropy tangent inputs both for specular reflection and coat layers of the open PBR material to control the direction of the anisotropic reflections. Now if we come down to the transmission section and compare it to the standard material, you notice we don't get the extra roughness parameter in the open PBR material. Also, scatter color is just called scatter here and scatter anisotropy is just called anisotropy, but they are doing the exact same thing. But the open PBR material has a new parameter called dispersion weight. So let me increase the transmission weight to one and zero out the metalness and also lower the specular roughness to zero. Now if I increase the dispersion weight to one, we would get dispersion as the dispersion aberration is set to 20. If I lower the Abbey value to five maybe, I get a stronger dispersion but still can control the overall contribution of the dispersion effect to the final look using this new dispersion weight parameter which is fantastic. It simply gives you more artistic control. So if you want real world Abbey values you simply set the dispersion weight to 1 and use the dispersion Abbey value to control the dispersion. Now let's come down to the subsurface section. We have the same parameters as the standard material, uh, weight, color, radius, radius scale, and an isotropy. The scale parameter is now named radius scale. In the open PBR material, we cannot see the subsurface mode, samples, and include mode, which are available in the standard material. Now, these are available under the Redshift Advanced tab of the open PBR material. If we go there and come down to the subsurface section, you can see these parameters are here. Also, the reflection transmissions, coat, and fuzz samples are all available here under the respective section. Now let's talk about fuzz and coat layers. Fuzz replaces the sheen layer. It's a new and improved model compared to the sheen component of the standard material. We will talk more about that later on. And the coat layer is the same as the standard material with some changes. In the standard material, you remember that the coat layer was the top most layer, sitting on top of every other layer and component. But that has changed in the open PBR material, now the fuzz is the topmost layer which can be used to represent reflection from microfibers such as fine hair, dust, fabrics and more. So let's take a look at the coat layer first. For that, let me open up 0405 standard surface coat.c4d file. Now create a new open PBR material and start IPR. Let me just lower the base weight to zero and increase the coat weight to one. The coat component of the open PBR material behaves differently compared to the standard material. So if you are used to the coat layer of the standard material, you need to adjust to the new way the coat component functions. So if I create a new standard material, zero out its base weight like the open PBR material, you notice the specular roughness is set to 0.3 in the open PBR material. So let's increase the reflection roughness to 0.3 in the standard material as well. And now increase the coat weight to one. 
Coat roughness for both of them is set to zero. Now, if I take a look at both of them on the shader ball, comparing the two, you notice they look quite different. You notice in the standard material, the roughness of the base specular or reflection layer is coming through quite apparently, while the open PBR code tends to influence the roughness of the base specular layer more. So take that into consideration. Also, code's color acts a bit differently. If I see the standard material on the shader and try to adjust the code color, you notice it changes the color of the code reflections themselves. But if I connect the open PBR material, you notice it does not change the color of the code reflections, but it tints the colors of the layers that are under the coats layer. So basically the code reflection colors remain unchanged, still white, while the specular reflections and the underlying base layers acquire a tint. Let me just use a bright green. Now the coat layer here has a new parameter called darkening, which is set to one by default. And if I play with it, you notice how it affects the look. The darkening represents a real world behavior when covering something with a coat. It darkens the surface beneath it. Darkening controls how intensely the coat layer is able to darken the layers beneath it. The one is the physically accurate value, but you can lower it to have artistic control. For now, let's set it to one. Now let's quickly talk about the fuzz layer. For that, let's open up the 0406 standard surface sheen scene 01 finish .c40 file. Let's create a new open PBR material, assign it to the mesh and open it up and also start IPR. Let's add a standard material to the node editor as well for comparison's sake. You notice sheen and fuzz have similar parameters. They both have color, weight, and roughness, and the parameters behave the same in both of them, like we learned in the sheen lesson. But the fuzz is not just a rename for the sheen component. It's a new BSDF that is the topmost layer sitting on top of every other layer, including coat, and can be used to represent the reflection from microfibers such as fine hair, peach fuzz, textile strands and dust grains on top of everything else. If I zero out the base weight and the specular weight, now I can start increasing the fuzz weight and use the fuzz roughness amount to control where the fuzz appears and the color to control the color of the fuzz. And now if I increase the specular and the coat weight, you notice the fuzz is still on top of those layers. So that's about fuzz. Now let's come down to the thin film section. For that, let's open up the 0407 standard surface thin film finish.c4d file. And let's open up the thin film material that we created for this lesson, if you remember, and start IPR. Add a new open PBR material and use it as the output shader. Lower the specular IR to 1, increase the thin film weight to 1 as well. So here the weight which is a new parameter simply controls how much contribution the thin film will have to the overall look. Now we start to get some coloring from the thin film. Let me just increase the transmission weight to one as well. 
You notice the thin film thickness is now a slider that goes from 0 to 1, unlike the standard material that used to be from 0 to 1000 and beyond. That is because the thin film is now micrometer based and not nanometer based, which makes it more user friendly. For example, we can directly connect the noise shader to thickness input without using a change range node. And finally, we have a mission instead of a weight parameter like in the standard shader. Now we have this new luminance amount to control the amount of emission in nits. So that's all you need to know about the OpenPBR material. See you in the next one.